They put eyes on this man's life. Yeah. And they changed his life. Mm -hmm. But look, there's two things I want. I I took away the strongest things I took away is two things. One, the man had to speak up and say his dream. My name is Charlie Rocket, former music mogul. But at the core, I'm a dreamer. Like this is my bus behind me. I'm going across America because I wanted to become a new type of millionaire. I want to change a million people's lives. I want to give people the same sensation I got to experience when my dream came true. So I'm spending the rest of my life right here on this bus, going across America, making dreams, blessing people. Nacho tacos, beef, pork or chicken, uh, nachos, which uh, will have like a the mirror fall in it which is uh, celery, carrots, and onion. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna tell you is the day my life changed was the day I decided to go on a winning streak because the reality is we're all losing. There's always things going wrong in our lives and if we focus on the things that are losses, we're gonna feel like a loser. But I decided to go on a winning streak and I try to keep that winning streak going every day and a winning streak can be something as small as green light good parking spot. I'm on a winning streak. Once you start acknowledging the wins, you start feeling like a winner. Be a delusional optimist. Like, understand that if you want something, tell yourself it's going to be easy. Because a lot of times we go into our journeys and we're like, I got to grind. It's going to be hard. We're using all these words that are like friction. Like grind is friction. Hard is friction. Why can't it be easy? The universe is like a restaurant. You're going to eat what you order. So if you order hard, you'll get hard. If you order easy, you're gonna get easy. If you order a miracle, you're gonna get a miracle. So delusional optimism, winning streak is gonna be easy. And no, when you ask for something, and when you pray for something, and when you manifest for something, say it's already done. It's already done. It's mine already. Like, I know it's mine and tell everybody that it's yours today. Even though it hasn't come yet, it's already yours. It's already done. So that's my advice for any dreamer out there. Keep dreaming, dream crazy, dream bigger, ask for easy, and know it's already yours. Because there's people dreams on there. And so, like I told them, people's dreams, they're, they're real to what they write because that's what they feel at that moment. And they're, and they're dreams, so they're not, they wouldn't let it all there, you know what I mean? And so I was feeling empathy for what they're going through because I had a lot of dreams growing up as, as a kid and I was a baseball coach for 13 years. I was a semi-professional bowler. So, I, and I went for that dream. And then, uh, but the kids that I coach, you know, they want to learn baseball. They want to, you know, graduate college. And I was there to mentor them and help them get through life and uh, teach them values and hard work. So um, that's what I felt when I was at the band. All, all that was all the one tortilla. So. Cooking for these guys. Um, it was a. Uh, it was easy, but uh, I had to like reteach myself a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Like you had to like re rewrite that bicycle. <laughs> so, um, but I got everything done. I was surprised. I mean, I made the I made a raspberry vinaigrette. It's a. Uh, Jerry? Hey, Chef. Yo. When I cooked for them the other night, I made a raspberry vinaigrette. Yeah? And it held. That's what I'm talking about. Good emulsification. Yep. How was it seeing all their reactions eating all the food? Uh, the food was gone. <laughs> so that's all I needed to know. <laughs> I mean, I had to keep cooking. You know? Um, everybody loved the the vinaigrette, I made that from scratch. And it held. 
because the oil and the vinegar doesn't, they separate. So, you have to pour that oil slowly. <laughs> Real slow, you've seen it probably. Yeah, and so it held, it held really good. It held for like two hours. So, so Chef Brent was my chef at school. Brent Beavers. And um, so he's, he's a great teacher. And you had a message for him over that week. Thank you for being there. The camaraderie that he had between you in the time that he was back in the kitchen mm -hmm. is such a special thing to see on film. Yeah. And like, I just want to say thank you for opening your kitchen to allow them to be able to come through. But yo, it was such a great time for me to be able to witness firsthand. And look, y'all, I'm on my mama. I manifested that whole thing. Uh, it feels good. Like I said, I just got to get, I had to get reacquainted with everything, but it's like riding a bike. <laughs> and even Chef had some compliments, you know. Um, I knew my definitions, stuff like that, so um, he, he said, uh, Chef Brent, you know, did well teaching. I did this, um recipe contest and they sent me this like dope ass knife but like I have tons of knives so I think like any good chef needs their first knife oh, cool. so you know it's a Damascus steel really light nice sharp knife um, but please you know I think that'll start your career off right Yeah, like this is really dope because he's not just like temporarily going in for the day. He's like, now I can put my knives here, put my put my forks there, hang my pots here. He's like, I'm really settling. This is gonna be so dope. I'm doing what I'm doing because there's so many people that are looking at their life, and with this being their only one, to not feel like it's like when you. When you only have one life, but you see other people achieve their dreams, you wonder, dang, like, did my life go to waste? So I just want to, like, help complete people's lives, and people's dreams are what they live for. Like, we're on this earth to be able to experience the abundance of what's possible, and I want to give that gift. So that's what I'm here for. They put eyes on this man's life. Yeah. And they changed his life. Mm -hmm. But look, there's two things I want. I, I took away. The strongest things I took away is two things. One, the man had to speak up and say his dream. Yeah. He had to it's believe in himself. It's, he had to believe in himself to even speak those words. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The second thing is, is that the power of community. Hey, amen. Bro, the community came out and like they showed out and, and whether they watched it on TikTok they watched it from yourself, caught it on, on, on online and was like, hey, brought more attention to it. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you for, one, yourself to be able to put that platform, give us the resources to be able to give Tony's story a moment in time. Yeah. And then to be able to see the beauty of that food truck that night, him cooking, bro. Yo, all food, right. food truck work is hard. But I just believe so big and I manifested and my dream came true and I was in the biggest Nike commercial of all time. So it inspired all the people around me to really start believing as well because they're like, wow, if Charlie can do that, maybe I can believe in something and it, something crazy can happen. Once you have your dream, speak it, think it, believe it, mm -hmm. and then be aware of the opportunities that come around because that was a big, big thing. Charlie and Timmy, which is like the COO of the company, they made everybody in the crowd close their eyes and imagine their dream mm. and imagine themselves as in that position. Absolutely. That was a powerful thing. When I was facing death, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I was 300 pounds and my dream when I was little was to be an athlete. And I always like would tell my friends and family, like, I'm gonna be a Nike athlete. 
I'm being a commercial with LeBron James and Serena Williams. And it came true. Like it, may, it makes like no like logical sense, but I just believe so big and I manifested and my dream came true and I was in the biggest Nike commercial of all time. I'd be like, Charlie, I know the hard work you went through as a, in the music business, and so I relate to that, and that's what I put into when I cook. I want everything to go as perfectly as I can to make everybody happy. And for what you've done for me is that it got me back started in to dicing a tomato, to even grocery shopping for certain types of spices. I mean, they're little things. It's not just cooking. It's not just being around the people. It's just the very first start. It's like a baby step. So I thank you, you know, um, for listening. Because that's all it took. I mean, you have to listen and let me vent and what I dream of. And, and you were there for me. So I just want to say thank you.